Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. On me, wait a second. What's this? It's a hound spawn. Look away. No, it's a terrifying creature. Have you taken down the demon lord yet? Have you crushed the ice golem? Ascended the doom tower? Fought against millions of real players in the arena? Well, now you can. All you have to do is click the link in the description to download Raid to your phone or PC today. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on Raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. My favorite champion is Yoshi the Drunkard. Not only because he carries around huge containers of wine on his belt, but his strong booze attack in the game is super powerful. If he's not your favorite, don't worry. There are over 500 raid champions with unique skills. Raid released an insane amount of updates like 11 new champions and almost 200 brand new missions to complete, with an exclusive legendary champion as your reward if you manage to finish them all. And if that's not enough, they also added five new challenging levels to most of the dungeons in the game. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below so you can start summoning your champions now. Good luck, and now, on to the show. We came to you with the challenge of making the most expensive breakfast sandwich you could come up with. What would you say is the star of this dish? Want to see? I'm ready. Oh, it's still alive? Breakfast. It's the most delicious meal of the day. French toast, pancakes, waffles. It's all basically birthday cake. But today, we're taking perfection and making it a little more perfect. In this episode of Fancify, culinary experts are taking classic American breakfast and upgrading it with unlimited money. I'm sorry, did you say gold? Ingredients. Caviar's the most expensive in the world. And culinary technique. How do you poach a freaking quail egg? So will these chefs bring home the bacon? We're gonna create a very big surprise in flavor for you. Or sizzle in defeat. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe I was trying to be too fancy. Let's find out now. Our first fancified meal of the day is served at Lucie, a brunch destination famous for its West meets East concept. The modest mastermind behind their menu, Chef Nicholas. Chef, an honor to be here. I'm very excited. This is my first breakfast for today. Chef Nicholas is a Sydney native, but his creations have no geographic limitations. Today, he's crossing all borders with an upgraded classic American breakfast, Eggs Benedict. The normal Eggs Benedict, is that commonly eaten in Australia? It is, yeah. Classic Eggs Benedict. Start with a toasted English muffin, then your favorite breakfast meat, a poached chicken egg, then the star of the show, hollandaise sauce. What is hollandaise? Egg yolks, you need acid, either lemon juice, or we use cider vinegar with harrigan reduction, so reduce it down, and then butter. This sophisticated Sunday brunch offering could easily ring up at $15, but today, Mr. Nick is gonna make his own much, much more expensive version. Get close to $80. $80 for Eggs Benedict. What is getting us to $80? The quality of ingredients, the originality. Start with the bread, we're gonna go to pea puree, black pudding, there's gonna be the scallops. And because the scallops are quite small, we're gonna use these quail eggs as well, and the hollandaise over the top. So no chicken eggs? Quail eggs have a higher yolk to egg white ratio, so we're gonna get a really, really creamy egg. That sounds fantastic. Time to prep the ingredients. Green peas are set to boil in chicken stock, then they're mashed. Now, the scallops. Season the scallops with salt and pepper. Using olive oil and butter, sear them until they're golden brown. What would you say is the star of the dish? The black pudding. The black pudding? Yeah. Blood pudding is a typical breakfast sausage for UK, like England, Ireland. But it's a sausage, right? It's a sausage. And what do they call pudding? This ancient Irish delicacy is made from pork blood and pork fat with oatmeal or barley and some herbs. I do like that it survived the test of time. Back in the day, this is how everybody ate. People utilized every part of the animal. And now, especially in the US, people are a lot more wasteful and they would kind of turn their nose down. Up, up, up. Yes, there's a, oh, what is this? Now, poaching the quail eggs. Poaching means cracking the eggs into hot water and then getting them out before they overcook. But poached quail eggs are next level. What are you most worried about? Oh, cracked it too hard, broke the yolk. Oh, I don't think that's gonna work. I broke the egg yolk, they're very small and delicate. Broke the yolk again. One good, two bad. Cracking straight out of the shell's not working, so we're gonna try something else. Crack it into here so we don't have to worry about the egg breaking in the shell. Old fashioned technique, I usually laugh at chefs for using, but for the quail eggs, I think we're gonna go that route. Uh, with the housewife technique, 100% success rate. We're almost there, but Eggs Benny is nothing without the hollandaise sauce. Chef Nicholas replacing standard egg yolks with salted egg yolks. Is this something you've tried before or that you had to try before coming up with this idea? Butter and salted egg yolk both go very well with seafoods. I know it's gonna work. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, not really. Are you not curious about like the show, maybe my lifestyle? Not really, though. Sorry about that. No, no, that's fine, no, that's cool. It's just, all right. It's time for the build. English muffins made in house. 
smashed peas, a beautifully grilled blood pudding, our seared scallops, tiny eggs on here, two on, I think I might go for three. And finally, we have our salted egg hollandaise sauce. And there we have the $80 Luzine Eggs Benedict. When I heard about the idea, I was a little bit skeptical. It was mainly the blood sausage that threw me off, but then I heard scallops and I was like, mm, tell me more. And then they said poached quail eggs. And I figured out now why it costs $80, because there are six eggs on here, but he actually used about 60 eggs. Quail eggs are beloved around Asia. They can be hard boiled, fried, added to a dish, or eaten on their own. But poached quail eggs are next level. This really super thin white protein on the outside, and that has the responsibility of keeping this tremendous amount of yolk inside safe, unpopped. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this scallop. I know, I should try it all together, but I can't resist trying just some of this scallop first. It tastes like opulence. It is tender, sweet, decadent. Can a scallop be decadent? And then there's this very intensely salty hollandaise sauce on top of that. It's similar in creaminess. It has just a bit sharper flavor. Hollandaise sauce, it's a shame that it's not used in almost everything. I would love to put it on a steak, put it on a fish, put it on my wife, anything. All right, we got everything here. Usually you're getting some intense ham, and the ham kind of takes over all the flavor. Here, the black pudding, it has a bold minerality to it. It's like the basement level of the apartment that has to have bars on the windows, and then, you know, it gets nicer as you go up. $80 is a lot, but they've also done a lot here. It's a good combination of technique and premium ingredients. My favorite part by far is the poached quail eggs. There's something that's metal about it, even though it's very cute and quite adorable. Breakfast done. Now it's time for breakfast. Café Marcel is a touch of France in the heart of Saigon. Last time, Chef Brian whipped up a black bamboo burger for the record books. Oh my god, that's so good. Now, he's back for more. Chef, put her there. Yes. In honor. Oh, nice to meet you. Do you have to throw away that glove now? <laughs> Shake hands again? Well, now it's not protected. Taking on what might be the world's most expensive, most unusual French toast creation. Classic French toast. Brioche bread dipped in an egg batter and tossed in a skillet of sizzling hot butter. Topped with whipped cream, fruit, and or maple syrup. You guys already have French toast on your menu. How much does that cost? It's about $5. That's real good. French toast is a sweet, straightforward dish. So I have no idea how Chef Brian is going to make this expensive. You're going to change it to a savory French toast. Savory? Not what I expected. How do you make a savory French toast? This one is the Iberico pop belly. We make the homemade bacon inside. That's a good start. Bacon is a breakfast item for sure. This is sea urchin. The Japanese, they call the uni. Then we have some salmon roe. And then this looks like... Caviar is the most expensive in the world. And then this is... A black truffle. Have you tried making this already? Just only one time we make for the staff. All the people like it. And they weren't just afraid of getting fired. Uh... I have faith in Chef Brian's palate and vision. I have to. I'm spending $100. Let's do it. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, but can you change your glove? Don't use that one. The fancy French toast starts with the bread, but instead of being sliced, it's more in the shape of a box. The brioche needs to be soft, crispy from the outside, and super moist in the inside. Our toast is a treasure chest waiting to be filled. Instead of whipped cream, he uses creme fraiche. It's like a fancy sour cream. In place of fruit, how about Iberico bacon? He used a very special pork from the Northwest. It had a really thick layer of fat, which will well blend into the taste of the dish. More creme fraiche to cover the bacon. Then, a sea seafood trio you'll never find at IHOP, sea urchin, salmon roe, and caviar. Swing, 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 Finish the tower with slices of truffle and a touch of lime zest. You see ours, $100 friend us. First off, I like it's a, a non-traditional shape. It's essentially a very expensive hot pocket. All the assembly is actually not complete yet. On the side, we have a chicken stock and some of this sauteed up imbarico ham or bacon. Ham bacon? Mm. This dog is like flavor on steroids and also on crack. Oh, it's so, so good. Chicken bones are joined in a pot with a symphony of Japanese flavors. Mirin, sake, soy sauce, kombu. Add some more Asian flair with ginger, lemongrass, brown sugar, spring onions, and shiitake mushrooms. Add water and cook it down until it looks like this. I'm supposed to also put these fried up imbarico bits on there. Oh, this is wild. Literally every bite I'm going to take here is $20. Have you guys ever done balloons? That made time slow down a lot. 
Oh man, I ate $50 already. It's extremely rich. Rich in that there's a lot of fat and rich as in I can't afford this. It is a flavor that's hard to describe. The stock is almost like a gravy. It's just so deep and rich. Then you have the creme fraiche. It's just like this kind of thick whipped dairy that's bringing everything together. There's sharp notes of seafoody essence with the sea urchin and the roe. Final bite. Remarkable. This chef, extremely skilled, extremely talented. I never would have thought of this. It has a freaking sea urchin on the French toast. A bold effort, a daring risk. Fortune only rewards the bold. What? How's that go? Okay, I don't know. There's a quote in there somewhere. Typically, my fellow Americans break their fast with something quick, easy, and that'll sustain them until lunch. Most Americans eat basically birthday cake for breakfast. Here in Vietnam, people have a very different definition of breakfast. Usually here we eat like chicken soup, pork soup, beef soup, sandwich with pork, beef, chicken. So the breakfast sandwich just might be the breakfast meeting point between the two cultures. To find out, I'm at Kitchen. And no, that's not a grammatical error. Can you explain why is this place called Kitchen? It's not Kitchen because it's the kitchen. This is not just any kitchen. It's a non-profit business serving delicious food whose revenue goes to children's charities in Vietnam. And Chef Beto is the heart of this place. I'm here today for breakfast. I'm talking about the breakfast sandwich. A classic breakfast sandwich starts with a carby vehicle like a bagel, then a breakfast protein like sausage, then eggs, then some gooey melted cheese. The average price? Usually just a few bucks. So how in the world will she scale this up to something costing well over a hundred dollars? Today we use the uh, wagyu beef. For that, truffle caviar too. What about this? What's in here? Oh, oh. It's striking its defensive posture. I don't think I've ever had lobster in a breakfast sandwich. Oh, actually, it will be just the salad. Oh my God. This fancy sandwich has a fancy salad on the side that starts with a friggin' boiled Canadian lobster. There's a lot of meat on this lobster. What part are you using? We just use the tail. Oh, what about those claws? For me. <laughs> Prepare an emulsion of champagne, chicken stock, butter, and saffron. Soak the lobster tail in that beautiful shade of crimson and allow it to absorb those flavors. It's time for the main event. What is the biggest challenge today in making this sandwich? It's put the gone around the bagel. It's the gold sheet, you know. The gold what? Sheet. Each of these shiny gold sheets are only 0.2 microns thick. To wrap seven sheets around a bagel is a tedious but very shiny endeavor. For you, what do you think the price would be? I think it would be 300. 300 dollars? Yes, just get back the cost. Oh, that seems like a tough way to run a business. <laughs> the golden vessel is now ready and it beckons to be filled. The scrambled eggs. But why use olive oil when you can add truffle oil? A5 Wagyu beef, seared to medium rare. And foie gras, tender, rich, fatty duck liver. Pan seared to golden perfection and seasoned simply with salt and pepper. We have our ingredients. Time for the build. The side dish. Give the lobster tail a kiss of blueberry sauce and a lettuce blossom. Top it off with a spoonful of caviar. Now, the main course, a luxury breakfast sandwich wrapped in gold. Have you just made this in your mind or have you actually practiced making this? On the food, on the menu that we built here, I make it on my mind and we just do it. Okay, can you close your eyes? Can you see it right now? Yeah. Can you take a mind bite? You got some gold in your teeth, you got some foie gras. How's it taste? Best life. Wow. I wish I could mind taste like you. That is a useful skill, but I prefer tasting food the traditional way. Last breakfast of the day, breakfast for dinner. Some call it Brinner. I think I need to work my way up. Fortunately, the bottom is a freaking lobster tail. Oh, I forgot the salad part. There, salad. Sweet, juicy, along with this blueberry sauce they put on here. It's such an interesting combination because the blueberry sauce is kind of yogurty. Very nice. Now. Moving on to the main course. It's like an Oscar, a statue, a trophy, first place. And it, oh, oh, why is this on me now? Is this, this is not good. How do I explain this to my wife, guys? No, I ate a sandwich. What, I didn't go to a strip club. I went to a sandwich club. Yeah, a lot of guys go there. They're just because they have good food. It's not because of all the dancing sandwiches. She's not gonna buy that. Edible gold has long been associated with luxury dining. Noblemen from the Middle Ages often added gold or silver to their dishes to flaunt their wealth. Today, it looks like I'm the nobleman. Oh, the bagel's so sturdy. Do I have gold? 
Oh no. It looks like I was making out with someone's gold-plated exhaust pipe. I can't see the gold it plays a pivotal role in the flavor. I could have just gone with silver or even bronze. If you have low self-esteem, can you just be like, can I get just bronze-plated sandwich, please? Platinum would have been okay. But a ton of flavors in here. It is absolutely delicious. The beef is nice and soft, really tender. The eggs, wonderful, silky, full of truffle flavor. And then the foie gras. And it just kind of turns into just a creamy, fatty mess in your mouth as you take a bite. I think I dislocated my jaw. Hold on. Got it. A good use of expensive ingredients here. Everything is contributing to the flavor. It still has a hint of breakfastiness. New word. The lobster tail. Maybe didn't even need it, but I enjoyed it. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a joke. Hmm? Now it's coming to mind. The most expensive meal of the day is usually dinner because people are getting drunk. They're just buying stuff they shouldn't be buying. But during breakfast, people are the most sober they're gonna be the whole day. And so they usually don't spend a lot of money. But today, we had three chefs that threw reason out the window. They didn't give a frick. Pardon my French. These chefs went above and beyond in creating extravagant, fancified breakfast feasts. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you had a fun time watching it. I had a fun time eating everything and showing and sharing all this with you. Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer. Be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Ready? <laughs> Corona. Ooh, I smell truffle. It smells delightful, elegant. It's like that fresh wallet smell. You know, money. That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to think of every French toast I've ever had. I've had a multitude of syrups. I've had different types of milk products, maybe even a yogurt, cream cheese. Honey. Honey. Yeah. Wait, are you talking to me or are you saying honey? I'm, Are no. you addressing me as honey? <laughs> Come on, you're the translator. You're getting a little frisky. Sure, okay. Um, I'll keep it professional. Are you petting it? Did you name that one? No. No, do you want to give it a name? No, I don't. Because you're about to kill it, right? Guys, we've done it. What another fun food video. I. Do I still have it on my lips? Is it still on here? Do I look like I was making out with C-3PO? My wife is gonna kill me. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. A oh, peace. Mm. You know, I could go for a breakfast burrito. We didn't get a burrito yet.